It's very long, thin, and graceful, but its main characteristic is silent. The abbreviation Quest in the name of the aircraft stands for Quiet Supersonic Technology. In Russia, this plane, for some reason, is regarded as a response to Putin. The fact is that the Lockheed Martin X-59 Quest in the project is designated as a passenger liner, albeit somewhat unusual. However, all four NASA flight research centers and Lockheed Martin are involved in the creation of the supersonic X-59. Agreed, this is not a very common circumstance. The symbiosis between NASA and a leading manufacturer of military aircraft indicates that we're facing a not-so-civilian project. A lot of technologies have been invested in the aircraft, which have at least a dual purpose. What is it? The natural flow of military developments into the civilian sphere? Or is the Lockheed Martin X-59 Quest an undercover agent? Now you will learn everything. Do not forget to subscribe to our channel to always keep abreast of technology advancements and learn about new developments before anyone else. So, the X-59 Quest is a big step forward in the global aircraft industry. The new aircraft has not yet become serial, but is just undergoing flight tests. But even at this stage, it is already considered an outstanding aircraft of 2022. The X-59 Quest is built based on a canard scheme. The aircraft is equipped with a front horizontal tail unit of a small area. Behind it is a triangular wing. At the back are engine air intake, traditional stabilizer, keel with an additional horizontal plane. The X-59 is nearly 100 feet long from nose to tail and has a wingspan of only about 29 feet. At the same time, the takeoff weight, according to the calculations of the designers, should not exceed 32,300 pounds. A distinctive feature of this aircraft is a prominent nose with a flat base and a curved top. They say the Roman Emperor Caesar had such a nose. Imagine the length of the X-59 nose cone is about a third of the length of the entire aircraft. The X-59 Quest could also be named after the Disney Pinocchio. However, the design of the plane is so delicate that what comes to mind is the huge rare bird Kevin from the movie Up, which was made by Walt Disney and Pixar. In any case, the curved part of the nose cone strongly resembles Kevin's beak. If you have other associations, share your opinion in the comments. Another similarity between the X-59 and the animated bird is the hissing sound the plane makes in flight. Usually, supersonic aircraft frighten by a characteristic roar when they overcome the supersonic barrier. A roar similar to an explosion can not only scare, but also break windows and houses. Therefore, current international regulations limit civilian airliner speeds to Mach 1 to avoid sonic booms over populated areas. However, the maximum speed of the X-59 reaches Mach 1.5. The noise level does not exceed 75 decibels. Developers are aiming for 60 decibels. According to international rules, 80 decibels and above are considered dangerous levels. For example, the noise level of Concorde reached 100 decibels. Sonic booms are the main reason why supersonic passenger aircraft don't fly today. The last copy of the Concorde made its final flight from Heathrow to Bristol on November 26, 2003 to its eternal parking lot. A sonic boom occurs when an aircraft breaks the subsonic barrier and enters supersonic flight. The sound wave is formed from the compression of the air in the nose of the aircraft. Then this wave diverges cone-shaped in all directions. As the plane flies at supersonic speeds, the rumble merges into a single sound wave, which is heard by any person on Earth who is in the cone of the sound wave. In the X-59 aircraft, this effect is minimized due to the special configuration of the nose. The bend is designed to prevent the formation of the lower part of the sound wave cone, and the upper engine air intake destroys the upper part of the sound cone. Thus, the ideal cone-shaped figure of a sound wave is destroyed. The length of the nose cone also makes sense. A long nose, smoothly passing into the cockpit without a protruding canopy, is needed to compensate for the shift in the center of the pressure. This is the point on the body of the aircraft where the lines of aerodynamic forces converge. At subsonic speed, this point is somewhere in the middle. When moving at supersonic speed, the center of pressure is strongly shifted back due to the compression of the oncoming airflow. 
With an elongated nose, this effect is minimized. The maximum flight altitude of the X-59 aircraft reaches 55,000 feet. This is very good, given the fact that the aircraft has only one engine. One engine, but so good. At the rear of the aircraft is the famous General Electric F-414, which is actively used on carrier-based F-A-18E F Super Hornet aircraft. It is believed that the F-414 is the best option for the fourth-generation fighter. The design of the F-414 uses engine technology for the promising YF-23 fighter, which could become a Raptor. We have already talked about this outstanding aircraft in one of our videos. The thrust of the F-414 and afterburner can reach 22,000 pounds of force. At the same time, the weight of the unit is just over one ton. This ratio indicates a high culture of engineering excellence or great engineering success. At the time of the appearance of the F-414 engine, no serial unit in the world had such indicators. As for the ratio of engine thrust to air consumption, the F-414 is still the absolute world record holder. Against the backdrop of the F-414, the engines of the French Rafale, Swedish Gripen, and Eurofighter look like poor relatives. Only the mighty Pratt & Whitney F-135, which is used on the fifth-generation F-35 Lightning II fighter, is capable of surpassing the F-414. The engine is not the only X-59 component borrowed from other aircraft. For example, the ejection seat and cockpit canopy here are from the old Northrop T-38 Talon, and the chassis is from the F-16. Surely there are other nuances. Borrowings indicate that the main purpose of creating the X-59 is its unique and advanced design and materials. The X-59 is primarily built from aluminum alloys. The sections of the tail unit critical for thermal load are made of titanium alloys. The rudder and plating of the bearing planes are made of the latest composite materials that NASA engineers have at their disposal. Also, the EVS-3600 pilot vision system, which has already been tested on Hercules and Boeings, should be attributed to the unique components. The fact is that the elongated nose cone and the recessed cabin make the pilot's work extremely difficult, especially when landing. Therefore, the system is equipped with vision cameras and infrared sensors that scan the area in conditions of poor or limited visibility. All data is displayed on screens in the cockpit. There are four monitors of different sizes on the dashboard. Three of them are used to display a variety of information about the technical condition of the aircraft and the progress of the flight. The fourth monitor functions as a windshield. As we said at the beginning, the participation and interests of NASA in the implementation of this project may indicate that the X-59 Quest will be used not only for civilian purposes. How can this aircraft be useful to the military? To understand this, you need to remember the history of X-planes. The X-59 is new to the X-Series. X-planes have always been a step forward in global aviation. Some of the technologies were supervised by the U.S. Army and still remain classified. There were also several missiles and UAVs in the X-Series. The father of the X-Direction should be considered the U.S. Air Force experimental aircraft Bell X-1, which in 1947 became the first manned aircraft in aviation history to break the sound barrier. This significant event happened on October 14, 1947. This was followed by a whole series of experimental aircraft with outstanding performance. For example, the X-35 aircraft became the prototype for the production F-35 Lightning II. But the most important milestone of the X-Series should be recognized as the outstanding aircraft North American X-15. More than 300 companies participated in its development and production. The X-15 still holds the record for manned flight speed. The record was set in 1967. The speed of the aircraft reached an incredible Mach 6.7. Actually, each aircraft of the X-Series is worthy of a separate video. Which of the X-Planes is the most interesting in your opinion? Write in the comments. The X-59 Quest is the first manned X-Aircraft in over three decades. The total cost of the project is $247.5 million. Most likely, the X-59 Quest will become a symbol of a return to hypersonic flight. This is indicated by the general trend of reorientation of many countries to hypersonic. Of course, hypersonic aircraft are not needed for civil aviation. 
Moreover, the design of the X-59 Quest will not allow it to reach hypersonic speeds. However, if the aircraft becomes the first booster stage for a hypersonic missile, then today's speed indicators will be quite enough. This means that the X-59 could become a key element in the American hypersonic program. There are already working examples when an aircraft serves as a carrier of hypersonic weapons in world practice. For example, the Russian hypersonic complex Kinzhal Dagger. The complex includes the MiG-31 fighter interceptor and the Iskander missile. The operation of the complex looks like this. The MiG-31 accelerates to a certain speed and then drops the missile. This is a very simple, fast, and cheap way to get hypersonic weapons, against which most air defense systems are powerless. The Dagger has already taken part in military operations, in particular in Ukraine. The effective range of the complex reaches 1,250 miles. The aviation version of the Iskander missile differs little from the basic modification. But in order to become the carrier of the Iskander, the MiG-31 fighter has undergone significant design changes. The disadvantage of such additions is that, having become an accelerating stage, the fighter can no longer perform its original functions and tasks. Perhaps that is why the U.S. Air Force did not use active fighters as carriers of hypersonic missiles, but preferred to build a special aircraft, the prototype of which can be considered the X-59 Quest. We'll be following the development of this project.